I'm sorry. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Today's session is brought to you by Forbes, and they will be joining us to talk about cough drop. And please don't let me butcher your names, but I will try. Jelena Atchison, AT specialist, and Katie Threl Threlkold, the education program developer. So I'm going to stop sharing and hand it over to you guys. Thank you, Chandra. Um, Katie is having some more technical difficulties, so I'm going to try to take lead on this. So I um, appreciate your guys' grace and patience with me um, as she's the one that was supposed to present this. Um, so I'm going to take over and present here. Let me share my screen. All right, looks like you guys can see this okay. Um, so just it some good. good, okay. So just some brief disclosures. Uh, my name is Juliana Atchison. I am um, ATS, an assistive technology specialist here at Forbes. Um, I am a paid employee at Forbes. Um, Katie is as well. Um, she's the educational program developer here at Forbes. Um, this course will exclusively focus on the Forbes AAC speech, speech generating devices, um, but also the CoughDrop AAC app and other similar devices and software will not be discussed. This is kind of what our agenda looks like. We'll leave time for some discussion and questions after um, the presentations, but if you do have any questions at, on something specific, feel free to put it in the chat and I'll try to take a peek at that for you. So some of the learning outcomes um, after this presentation is we hope that you'll be able to participate. Um, explain three assessment tools available through the CoughDrop AAC app um, that can utilize for dynamic AAC assessment. Describe three intervention features within the CoughDrop AAC app that we used by both <clears throat> clinicians and family members for supporting an AAC user's communication. Identify three features to customize within an individual's AAC system to personalize it for long-term success. And here we go about the cough drop app background and updates. <clears throat> so cough drop started um, the a software developer, Brian, um, who was an entrepreneur and was trying to find a good communication system for his daughter who had been diagnosed with Brett syndrome. Uh, because of his background in usability, he kept getting frustrated with poor design decisions and old technology. So he collaborated with over 30 SLPs, OTs, and ATs specialists to build something better. Um, and the result of that was cough drop. Before long, Brian found Scott, um, whose son is a nonverbal with autism, and the two kept working to make cough drop more effective for individuals with an, any communication need. They felt like too many our providers were trying to lock in their customers with proprietary solutions and high prices, so they wanted to fix that. As a result, CoughDrop is an open source and incorporates open license content like free symbols and community generated boards, and all our vocabulary sets are released under a Creative Commons license. That way we can usually collaborate with and publicly share resources with teams around the world in order to keep raising the bar. It's like, um, CoughDrop isn't just another AAC app. It off offers open standards and open access. So communicators are free to build a solution that will work best for them. Additionally, it's in the class of its own as it can run on just about any type of device because it is cloud-based. That means the account information is saved in the cloud rather than on a single device. CoughDrop is built to run on all major devices, including desktop computers and laptops, iPads and iPhones, Android tablets, phones, Kindles, Chromebooks, and Windows devices. <clears throat> the interface stays consistent across the devices so that users can swap out devices with minimal interruption or confusion. CoughDrop is built on modem web standards and offers an open API 
and integration points to try to work with as many existing systems as possible. <clears throat> cough drop can function whether or not you are connected to the internet. Not all functionality is available when you're offline, but you can still have a fu fully functioning communication device when disconnected from the internet. To do this, cough drop syncs your vocabulary set to a local device <clears throat> for offline use. Syncing will happen occasionally in the background as well. <clears throat> what makes cough drop different? Having it on any device, CoughDrop is built to run on all major devices, including desktop computers, laptops, iPads, iPhones, Android tablets and phones, Kindles, Chromebooks, and Windows devices. The interface stays consistent across all devices so that users can swap out devices with minimal interruption or confusion. Personalized communication and access across multiple devices. Grow your vocabulary over time with a simple interface backed up by lots of help and training. Spark Cloud. Work offline with backup in the cloud so it's painless to switch devices if something breaks. You can also share boards with others and open license from them for anyone to use. Empower the team with reports that help everyone improve. Teams can collaborate and modify boards for each individual without having to take their device away. Flexible pricing, choose the pricing option that works for you. You can buy as one-time purchase, purchase an annual site license or pay month to month for as long as you'd like. Goals and ideas, plan an effective strategy using built-in goal tracking tools and get ideas from community experts for how to reinforce communication strategies. And some admin tools, you can track licenses and see reports across rooms, buildings, or teams easily move people to between classrooms and run evaluations or profiles. It's anytime, anywhere, AAC. CoughDrop is built on web standards and will run on most modern interfaces, including desktop and laptop computers, iPads and iPhones, Android tablets, and all different types of devices. To use on a tablet, PC, or smartphone with AAC Now, you can install CoughDrop and the Forbes AAC Premium Boards on any household or workplace device available. With CoughDrop's powerful cloud-driven content management, your personalized boards are available to run on multiple devices at the same time. With Smart Cloud Sync turned on, you can access your personalized boards from anywhere with no internet required. This is the current updated CoughDrop pricing. For communicators, built-in inflections, SMS, emails, etc., communication systems should be unique to each individual. CoughDrop has vocabulary sets for many different levels with built-in supports, assessment tools, and vocabulary progression tools to start basic and grow over time. CoughDrop is one of the most flexible apps available with support for two-way messaging, remote modeling, eye or head tracking, and switches, all to give their user more flexibility and support. For families, dozens of boards in different sizes and eight plus languages, learning to communicate takes help from the people around us. CoughDrop families can use the app on all their devices. It includes activity, <clears throat> ideas, and strategies to help families and friends learn how, to, how they can help make communication happen. You can see in this picture, it's the same um, CoughDrop app running on all these different devices. For practitioners and staff, experts and staff need to be able to see what's working and what isn't. CoughDrop has built-in reports and goal-setting tools to keep everyone on the same page and track progress over time. It's easy to edit and modify to personalize for the user. Alternate access options, data collection tools, built-in reports, and goal-setting tools. This is a testimony from one of the SLPs. Onboard format. CoughDrop created an open board format that allows AAC content to download their boards, clients to download their boards and transfer them to other AAC apps that use the OBF. 
It is our mission to get the other AAC app and device makers to allow their clients to transfer their boards as needed. Forbes AAC and CoughDrop joined for forces at the start of 2023. Um, AAC now is something that we launched to for practitioners and communicators to be able to access um, clinically developed boards on any tablet, PC, or smartphone without having to wait for funding. Um, kind of meet that, bridge that gap between recommending a device and getting their funded device. Some common AAC barriers, limited access to tools needed to conduct AAC trials and evaluations, lengthy insurance processing times, um, high deductibles or plan exclusions. Um, there's no AAC during device repair. So those are some of the things, benefits to the AAC now is it gets access to their communication while waiting um, or not having the ability for insurance to cover a device. They can have a low cost tablet with this high um, clinically developed language system. AAC Now practitioner cards give full access to cough drop and Forbes AAC premium boards. Um, so that cost is no longer a barrier. You can use any tablet, PC, or smartphone. You can immediately have the tools you need to perform AAC evaluations and implementation. You can also give cards to your communicators, hand out cards to your communicators and submit a funding packet for a Forbes device. Communicators use their cards to access and personalize their boards while they wait for their Proslate or Winslate. Communicators evaluating ADC, AAC can trial cough drop and Forbes AAC premium boards at home using any household tablet. So they don't have to wait for a loaned, um, loaner device to come in the mail that can take up to a couple weeks. There's no wait list, they get it immediately. Um, <clears throat> use your AAC Now communicator card to access and customize your boards today. Best of all, personalizations and modifications will auto sync to your your uh, funded device to your ProSider Wednesday when you sign in with your cough drop profile. When a communicator submits their application, um, partnering for AAC immediate access, the funded process for a dedicated device can be difficult to maneuver. While we have worked hard to create a streamlined funding portal, making support and approval quicker and easier, the application still takes some time. You don't want your communicator to be left without any way to speak while caseworkers are evaluating their application. To eliminate this current concern, CoughDrop and Forbes have partnered to offer the option <clears throat> to immediately access CoughDrop as well as versatile and customized speech boards available only to Forbes AAC users while working through the funding process. When a communicator submits their application we <clears throat> for a device, we will be given a free, <clears throat> So they'll be giving a free license for two months um, to trial these boards and have access. Once the Forbes device is approved, it will be delivered and the communicator will have that license for life. The importance of a dedicated device um, Having a dedicated device, you get a warranty, you get the tech support, you get the rep support, you get a durable case, um, design features that um, are for appropriate use. And then there's symbol types, symbol organization, and available uh, vocabularies. Within the app, the following symbols are available. Um, you have your more common symbol sticks, PCS symbols, um, as well as the high contrast symbols. Um, and you also have the option to upload any photos that you want. You can search Google images. So if there's a symbol that doesn't really resonate with that client, you can find something that really um, clicks to them. So it's easy. Here are some vocabulary options in cough drop. Um, you have quick core 12, 24, 40, 60, 84, and 112. Um, they promote the use of core vocabulary plus fringe options with consistent motor planning. Quick core is a large vocabulary set with allow <clears throat> with all buttons at most three button presses away. With so many words and so few button presses, a communicator can gradually discover and learn motor pathways for what they want to say. 
The board levels are based loosely around themes, but the real value of the vocabulary set is in its consistent motor planning. The top level has many common core words with additional core and French words available in the second level. And this is what Quick Core 24 looks like. So you can see there's lots of the core words. <clears throat> and then anything with this little tab in the right hand corner, that's gonna jump to a page and give you more. Um, So this little animation just kind of shows you how you can navigate through the pages. Um, you can also <clears throat> long press into a button and kind of find the different variations of that word. So you can change do to do ing or Vocal flair, this is another vocabulary option. It's um, a large vocabulary set with the main page that is primary flat but dynamic core and links to additional categories, support words. Vocal flair is built to be consistent for a developing communicator while also being robust enough to grow with them grammatically. Emphasis is put on faster access to more robust and more common words in a keyboard with built-in suggestions is also included as well as an alphabetized word list to increase flexibility. A collection of context-specific categories are included and additional categories can be easily added or adjusted based on the needs of the individual communicator. So this is what Vocal Flare 40 looks like. As you can see, you've got a lot of like, the core words down here and you've got your categories across the top. And then there's that keyboard at the right bottom And so this is going to be an animation. Let's kind of show you how that navigates. And then um, Communicate is a socially focused page <clears throat> set designed exclusively for people who use augmentative and alternative communication. It was designed so that it could be easily used in conjunction with low tech communication book and as a progression, progression form of book to dynamic display device. <clears throat> communicate is designed for people who rely heavily on the environment or context in order to communicate effectively but understand concepts and language used in conversation and during everyday activities. Communicate supports emer emerging literacy youth skills and enhances comprehension by using photographs and symbols to represent language. Communicate was designed by Kate McCollum, a speech therapist. <clears throat> This is what Communicate looks like. So it's just another one of those um, category sets available. And then we do have our Forbes AC Premium Boards. Um, there are several new boards that we have added. So if you're used to CopDrop um, and don't have, you know, haven't gotten it since Forbes and CopDrop merged, um, these would all be new. The Core Word language system provides AC users with a powerful combination of core language, fringe vocabulary, and banks of key phrases. The language system is divided into three distinct levels that correspond with vocabulary layouts, Core Word 6, 20, and 40. The Core Word language system features dynamic vocabulary layouts with automatically change as the user makes selections. Once a word has been selected, the layout updates to show only words that are likely to be used next. By offering these next words in plain view and removing unwanted vocabulary, users don't have to waste time and energy searching for their next word, ensuring maximum efficiency with a minimal learning curve. <clears throat> this is what our core word 40 looks like. 
And this is going to be an animation to kind of show how you can navigate through this page that it's easy. You can open up the keyboard and it's going to have um, word prediction up there at the top. And there's also an a ABC keyboard available as well. QuickCore Pro um, is a tailored core vocabulary set customized by Forbes, currently available in 12, 24, 40, 60, 84, and 112. This set promotes the use of core vocabulary while adding common French options and provides the opportunity to expand communication benefiting from a con consistent motor plan. With so many words and so few button phrases, a communicator can gradually discover and learn motor pathways for what they want to say. And so this is what Quick Core 112 looks like, which Looks like a lot of that ends, but um, with the easy color coding, makes it easier for users to navigate through. Vocal Flare Pro is a large vocabulary set with a main page that is from a preliminary, primarily flat but dynamic core and links to additional categories support words. Customized by Forbes AC, this pro set includes a Fitzgerald color coding color scheme and symbol six image options behind what the basic vocal flare offers. It's currently available in the layouts 24 all the way to 112. A collection of context specific categories is included and additional categories can be easily added or adjusted based on the needs of the individual communicator. Vocal flare is built to be consistent for a developing communicator while also being robust enough to grow with them dramatically. And this is what Vocal Flare 84 with the keyboard option looks like. So it actually docks that um, keyboard on the bottom there. So it gives them access to all the words, core and fringe options up top, but also the keyboard. Sequoia 15 Pro is a branching vocabulary set built in an effort to support communication organized by pragmatic function, but with the goal of encouraging expansion into generalized and core oriented vocabulary. Customized by Forbes AAC, this pro set includes a designer color scheme and simple sticks image options behind what the basic Sequoia 15 offers. And this is what this looks like. Symbol links is a board set designed for those who benefit from the use of picture symbols in their communication set. Symbol links is offered in the following layouts, four, eight, 12, 20, and 60, or 30, I'm sorry. <clears throat> it provides essential support for those who rely on symbol-based communication systems with vocabulary organized by category, enabling users to find their words quickly. And this is what this looks like. So obviously a lot more category-based than some of the other language systems that Phrase links um, is a board set designed for literate AAC users who prefer to utilize pre-made phrases. Um, this main board includes several quick fire phrases used often in conversation like yes, no, please, thank you. A keyboard is included for spelling, spelling and literacy and, board, and boards can be customized with personal or preferred information. This is gonna look very similar to the last one um, just without the symbols. Tools for dynamic AAC assessment. So CoughDrop has built an evaluation tool which can be used to determine what AAC settings and options may be best for a student or potential communicator. You can access this tool for specific communicator or through your own account. Starting an evaluation for a student, you can supervise. If you are a CoughDrop supervisor and have connected communicator accounts, then you that you oversee, you can begin an evaluation for a specific account that you supervise. On your dashboard page, select communicators. 
from the option in the blue bar near the top of the screen under the communicator name for which you would like to run the evaluation, open the drop down menu under extras and select run evaluation. So this is an image of what um, cough drop would look like if you were a supervisor. These were all the kiddos that you would oversee and you can click right into their profile and run a, run a evaluation. <clears throat> if you need to run an AAC evaluation for a person who does not yet have a cough drop account or who is not yet connected to your account for you to supervise, you can still begin an evaluation session. <clears throat> you would go to your account page by selecting my account from the top drop down under your user icon to the top right corner of your dashboard. On your account page, look for the extras menu on the screen and open the menu and select run evaluation. And this is what the evaluation tool looks like. Once you hit run evaluation, the program will take you into an evaluation session, which is customized speak mode sessions. Before you begin, you can adjust many of the evaluation options for this session by hitting the settings button in the bottom left corner or by opening the drop down menu, the top right corner and selecting email settings. Show you where to access that. On the setting page, you can adjust the person for which you are performing the evaluation. If you supervise other cough drop accounts, the title for the evaluation, the type of images used for the evaluation, the search target for the session, whether you would like auto prompts or you also have the option to add notes throughout the evaluation. You can adjust the session settings at any time during the evaluation by hitting the settings button or by selecting email settings from the top drop down menu. On the setting page, you can adjust the person for which you're performing the evaluation. Showing that. The evaluation will progress through several different stages. The communicator will be asked to identify the target in different situations with different button sizes and image types throughout the session. The program will adjust the button size and options to try to help the communicator be as successful as possible. If small targets are difficult to identify, the program will offer larger targets trying to help you identify the optimal setting for this communicator. <clears throat> In the introduction, a short introduction including instructions for the evaluation tool, you'll find a target in a grid of empty buttons. Differentiate targets, find a target in a grid of populated buttons and all Alternate simple libraries, find targets using different simple libraries. And you also find targets by name, open end comments, categorization, find targets by inclusion, exclusion, or association, find the words that identify or describe images. And then I don't have a live demo for you, but I can show that after. Um, this. Delita is Kim. <laughs> Sorry to Thank Katie, you. Her internet was down, so she asked me to hop in. So hi guys, I'm Kim. <laughs> um, hi. I'm <laughs> Delita, and um, I am also a sales rep here in Florida, but then I am transitioning over to product manager for CopDrop. So um, really excited about a lot of the changes that are coming and the things that cough drop can do. So sorry to just like randomly pop in on you guys. Um, but I didn't know, Jelena, do I'm going to run through like an eval real quick or like if you got it, I don't know if that would be helpful to me. I always process better when I can actually see it in real time and it happening. I think that that would probably be appreciated. Um, awesome. Are you able to share your screen? I, let me see. So I need, I guess, Jelena, I don't know if you can stop sharing and then let me see if it'll let me share. All right. There we go. Got it. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to give you kind of the ADD version because my brain is all over the place today. Um, I'm currently training my replacement at the same time. So I'm a little scatterbrained today, but this is what I see when I log in. And then if I go to my homepage or my dashboard, these are all of the different page sets that Jelena was walking you through. 
Um, in my personal experience, I know a lot of people are excited about the core word as well as vocal flair, giving a lot of different options. So if I go into my speak mode, um, because I am um, in an administrative account, it gives me different choices. So do I want to speak as myself? Do I want to model for one of my um, end users? Do I want to act as one of my end users? So I'm going to go ahead and speak as me. So this is our core word. A lot of the therapists I work with are excited about this one. Hi. Hey. Like Janina said, it kind of walks you through all of the different steps. So I'm not having to do a ton of navigation to be able to Love increase them. my MLU while I'm using the device, which is nice. And then with vocal flare, it's nice to have all of the different categories across the top, but then also have your a uh, core word at the bottom as well as a keyboard. So it gives you a lot of flexibility when you're communicating and quick access to the things that you're gonna need. But let's go into the evaluation tool really fast. That's something that I wish that I had when I was practicing as a clinician. Like, oh my gosh, even if you're not using cough drop as an AAC tool in the classroom or for progress monitoring, it's a great option. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna run the evaluation. So it's very similar. Have you guys used AAC Genie before? Cool. All right. So it's similar to that, but the, again, the feedback I've gotten from clinicians I'm working with is the things that you wish you could do in AAC Genie cough drop does, but being able to skip around, being able to save things within your session, um, all of that works a lot easier within this. So I'm going to go to next, start. So like Jenna said, find the cat, find the cat. Well, I'm working with someone, find the cat. they hate cats. So this isn't going to work for me. So I'm going to go into my eval settings. Personally, I hate the prompts. I would rather prompt my client. Some people want the prompts and they're consistent and sound the same. I also personally am not a fan of play the sound for correct action items. I don't want them getting any kind of feedback. Can you find the cat? So I'm going to take that off. Then I'm going to come in here and let's say we like fruit. So we're going to do all different kinds of fruit for this session. And then I can name it. So I do not have to create an account. And I can just put it in here. This is what I'm going to do. Then what symbol? See if you do can I find a cat. I can do open symbols, which is the default, or if I am specifically using like lesson pick symbol sticks, board maker but I'm gonna just leave it as open and now I'm gonna update. So now it's gonna start giving me different fruit. And this is gonna to help to determine what size I can use. So we get here and I'm like, okay, I'm stuck. Let's go to the next one. So I can either jump to my next section, I can go back or I can do a jump to. And this is something AAC Genie are not able to do, which is cool in cough drops. So I'm like, okay, we did the fine targets, but maybe I want to differentiate targets so I can jump in here. Ooh, this one's hard. So I have all different fruit, but now I'm looking maybe for one that's not a fruit. And we're done with that one. So I'm going to just say this time we'll go next section. So it'll say pick. Okay, and now it's going to start giving me different symbol sets too at some point and starting to analyze that. So again, I'm just going to, for the sake of this, go to next. I match them. Same thing, go to next. This is the one that people will get a little stump on for a second, because even if I had on my prompts, it's not going to say anything. So I'm asking my client, what do you see happening? What are they doing? So play. I might say play ball. or ball, done. Or maybe I have someone that's not responsive or we're not literate. So I just need to skip this section completely. I'm going to go to the next one. Same thing. So next section, so you guys get kind of a quick sampling. You randomly and then the next section. 
I find the foils in here to be really tricky. A lot of them are very similar in their like features, like cup versus cut. So when you're looking at the literacy skills, to me, these are these can be a little tricky, especially if you have anybody that has some visual impairments. To me, sometimes these are hard to see. Um, but let's just go ahead and we're gonna end our eval here. So here are my notes. I can put it in like stopped on this section, or I can say very distracted by whatever behaviors today, X, Y, and Z. Um, and then I can save it. So when I save it, I'm going to be able to have access to this report. So it can tell me how long do we spend doing this? How accurate were their hits? For me, again, as a clinician, this average response time is super important because now I know, okay, on average, it's going to take me about three seconds to respond to that. So when I'm providing prompts, then maybe I want to wait five seconds, right? To kind of reduce that cue dependency. So now I know that I can see, all right, we've mastered a field of four. Then you get this heat map. And so you want to make sure that your clients are able to access the entire screen. So sometimes we find that there's kind of maybe a missing field cut, something's going on, and we need to bring in some of our OT friends or PT friends and see what's going on with that. Is it a physical access issue or is it a visual issue that we're not able to activate the entire screen? Then we have our grid sizes for our target finding and then our field sizes. So you can see the accuracy and kind of figure out where to start. It breaks down all of the different sections that we just did. So I can see what was the score, how long did it take, again, those average responses. So maybe using those core words, right? My response time was 14 seconds. So if we're going into a task that I'm asking you to expand your MLU, then I might need you to have a little bit extra time when we're doing that. And then here you can see symbol libraries. So using the default open symbols, we're at 50%. However, when I use lesson picks, I was at 100%. If I continued down the assessment, it would continue to look at PCS symbols and all of the different sets. So again, if you're going in and doing like a feature matching to a device or to a different software, this would give you another way to kind of look at what you needed to go through that. Then you can see the open-ended prompts, the questions, and then let's say it's three days from now and I wanna resume the evaluation and I can jump in here and pick up where I left off or I can jump around again. Any questions about that eval, like a quick down and dirty on that section? No. Okay. I think this is the first time that I've seen an evaluation and, and mind you, I'm not an SLP or anything, but um, yeah, this is this was nice to see. There's other things too within cough drop. So in here um, with the reports, this is where I would have that, but then I would also have, so these are for me, um, but I could go in and also change out and see any of the students or kiddos I'm working with. I can see how many sessions are they using the application for, what are their words? I can see how many different buttons. Then I can see their words that they're most frequently using. And it makes this cool word cloud. Then I can see are we using mostly core? Are we using fringe? What parts of speech are we using? How often are we using it? The time of day? Again, depending on how you set it up with a different privacy, you can look at the activation map or where they're using it as well. So it gives you lots of feedback so that you're able to go from there. Um, the default just sidebar is not to share any data. So you would have to go in and physically turn it on to share any of these data points with the software. So I know some parents and um, organizations are concerned about that, but the default is not to share. So just to have that in mind. And then Jelena, I'll let you take back over and then if we want to or have more time then we can go back through and see if there's more stuff you guys want to see see thank you so much <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I feel like I like hijacked that from you Jelena no that's okay I didn't have it set up to go so I'm glad that you were there um Jenna, how are we doing on time just a quick the session runs until 9.15, so you have a little bit of time still. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you.
We want to make sure that uh, everyone has has a chance to ask their questions. I know I have a hundred. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll just finish through this slide deck and then um, I kind of try to jump through some of the things that Kim talked about. Um, and so this is just cough drop. Oh, I messed that up. Let me go back. So that's some of the things that she went through. Um, so this is kind of what the usage report was. She showed you a little bit about that. Um, it can be filtered by date range, which makes it easier to check for progress. Um, for you want to share your screen again? Oh, it didn't work. I'm sorry. There we go. There we go. Can you see there it? There we now? go. <laughs> um, so this is kind of what the usage report looks like. Um, and like I was saying, you can kind of filter it by date range, helps make it easier to check for progress for comparing different date ranges. Word usage, um, cough drop has showed also shows word usage both in a chart and a list form for most common words. The chart shows both total words and unique words that they use. Um, to give a better idea, if the user is pressing a wide range of buttons or a small set of buttons repeatedly. Uh, from the word usage selection, you can open a word cloud and see visually what words are being used most often based on their size. So in this word cloud, you can see eat is gonna be the most common word that they use. Um, you can also use the zoom and reload buttons to change the size of the images and redraw it as you needed. The parts of speech section shows different word types and what percentage of buttons map to different word types shown in a pie chart. Um, it also shows a sentencing chart meant to show how words are chained together by the communicator. And then cough drop shows how frequently buttons are used pressed at the different times of the day, which is really beneficial. You can see, um, you know, if they're primarily using their device at a certain time or a certain day of the week, um, really get a feel for how much support maybe they're getting in different areas or at home. Um, the weighted word section shows a list of all words used by the communicator in the date range with more frequently used words showing up larger and darker. There's also a location. Um, so you can actually track and see a geolocation using the GPS available on the communicator's device where they're using the device. Um, it can filter all other reports based on their location in the addition to date range to be able to better compare usage across different locations like home versus school. And there also is a heat activation map. So you can kind of visually see where on the screen users are pressing to generate an, act an activation heat map. This map shows where the user is pressing buttons and where it's happening most frequently. It's going to be useful for making sure that it isn't a dead zone somewhere on the device, such as a location the user can't access visually um, because of visual or motor constraints. And then here's a data logging and reports. So this is kind of what that looked like. Kim showed that. Um, so you kind of scroll through and you can see all those features that it shows. Um, so you can, another feature, Cotrack is the goals feature. Um, you can set a goal, <clears throat> which allows communicators and supporters to set and track communication goals. Users can find goals by navigating to the account page and hitting goals at the top. Um, communication teams can use this in-app assessment tool to monitor progress and can leave messages, notes, or encouragement relating to the goal, which can be viewed by the communicator and the supervisor. Editing and modifying. How do I customize an existing board and cough drop? Um, allows you to connect to boards created by different authors or to take boards other <clears throat> others have created and personalize them using your own pictures, additional buttons, different order. Personalized boards can remain private or can be shared for others to continue to use and personalize. Um, when you are logged in and looking at one of your boards, you can hit edit board to begin personalizing and modifying the board. Um, you can copy and personalize or create somebody else. You can make a new copy of the board you already own, so you can copy that and um, change different features of that. You can adjust the symbol set of the images. 
If you try to make a copy of the board, it's currently part of your vocabulary set, copter book S. You want to slough out the new copy for the original communication set. Um, that's kind of deep. Um, these are just talking about some of the settings that uh, we would recommend for when you have cough drop. Um, you can set preferences to require a pin, do exit speak mode, um, keep a log of communication, turning off log to turn mode. There's just a lot of different functions that it has. These are some of the general preferences. And that's where you can find them um, at the top. If you go to preferences, this is where you can make all those changes. So core and modeling, the section applies primarily to the way cough drop performs functions used by a supervisor to monitor a communicator's cough drop account. The settings in this section manage the way words are categorized by cough drop built-in logging and the way modeled words are noted by the system. Sure, you can model I'm like, I got if you, you want, yeah. I got you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, instead of going through all of that, let me, I, again, uh, now that I know where you're going with it, I was like, I know this presentation, so let me give you some more. Okay. Yeah, I had, this is the first time yeah. I've seen it, so. <laughs> yes, yeah, so if you want to stop sharing, then I'll give you guys kind of the quick rundown again of some of the stuff that is in here. Again, I find it personally more meaningful to actually see it in action. Um, so again, I'm back here at where I started. So if I want, I can go in and set up goals for whoever is under me if I wanted. Um, then the goals are really cool. So if I want to set a new goal, I can either use a goal that's already here or I can write up my own goal. So you can see here are some different ones. And then you get these cool things that are called badges. So if you want to create a badge, if you have a kiddo that you're working with that's really highly motivated, right, by like a token system, the badge is one way to do it. And it'll stay up in the top corner so then they know like, okay, this is how close I am to hitting my achievement for that, which is really motivating for some um, of our communicators. So really cool option. And then in here, you can also send notes back and forth and set different focus words. So I'm gonna go into a different board. So over here, there's a lot of different uses and features features for the boards. And so we have obviously the traditional thought of the different communication pages that we showed earlier, but just to give you an idea of some of the other applications. So this is one that I'm currently working on for our local aquarium. So this is a social story that we created. It's a very um, high sensory exhibit that they just opened. Welcome so to Morph. When you come in and you can- I am going to the new Morph exhibit at the Florida Aquarium. Walk through all of this. I'm gonna skip through it real so quick. And I'm ready to go. I can get here and I can say, yes, I wanna go in this exhibit. No, I don't wanna go in this exhibit. Like, what are we gonna do, right? And so then if I go into it, then I now have a vocabulary that's specific to that um, exhibit, the animals that are within the exhibit, and I have a way to talk about it. So really cool things that you can do that are kind of like outside the box of just using it for just strict communication. And a lot of teachers, I was just in New York last week, were using it in their classroom to add visual supports to their lesson plans, which was really cool. So let me show you, this one's a hospital one that I've been working on with our local hospital, but here's another page layout. And you're like, wait, there's buttons missing. What happened? So the really cool thing in cough drops, I'm gonna exit speak mode and I wanna edit this board. So with this paint feature, it makes it really easy to modify. So if I want to unhide all these ones that are shaded out, I can just drag my mouse over and now I can add those words. And then you can see I have some missing over here and I can get those and add them back in, but maybe I'm not ready for these words. So I'm gonna continue to leave them there. So then I can just save that and move on. The other thing that you're gonna see on here, you see where it says level 10. 
If I click that, it's going to tell me how many different buttons can I work with. And then you can go down to different levels. So it for motor planning is going to keep the locations in the same spot. But as I increase, I'm going to have more access to the buttons. And this is based off of SLP feedback as to what order they tend to teach vocabulary within core word. So again, as I move up my levels, I'm going to have more and more access to more vocabulary, but nothing is changing location. So as far as motor planning, everything will stay is exactly where it is. So just some cool things to point out. Then the option to share. So within your organization, if you want to share boards, you can. If you want to share them um, to specific users, you can as well. You can allow them to edit or not edit. For example, the aquarium board, we do not want people coming in and editing that board. So that would be one that we do not allow editing for. We control the board as they come into the aquarium because CopDrop is cloud-based. They can scan a QR code and it will load that social story and communication board onto their phone automatically with that QR code. As soon as they close out that internet um, browser, it will close cough drop and they will no longer have access to that page. So lots of different things that you can do with that. And then going into modeling. So I'm going to go back into, we'll just stay here, put it back in speak mode. So I'm here, and then if I wanted to model vocabulary, remember how we were showing you like the data tracking? So when you're doing that and you're tracking data, you wanna make sure you're separating out what the communicator is saying versus what is being modeled for them. So possibly I have this on my phone and then you have your dedicated device with cough drop on it. So I'm going to model for you. I'm going to come over here. This is the easiest way that I have found to get into this. I'm going to click the X three times. So one, two, three. And then now you see the little hand that popped up like this. So everything that I now say or press is going to have this little hand, which means it's being modeled. So it's not spoken by the communicator, but it's spoken by a supporter. And so when you get your data reporting, it will separate out those two things. So you can see how much vocabulary was modeled, how often it was modeled, what words were modeled, but then you can also see in response what the communicator communicated back as well. So you can see if I start Nine. making selections up at the top, there's that little hand on top of it. So that's indicating to me that I'm in modeling mode. And then I can hit the X again, and now I'm back as... Uh, communicator. And all of that will get tracked. And I'm going to go back here. It's on with boards. And I can get into any of the reports and see which is which. So you can see here I have speech and then I have modeling. So when I go into modeling, I can see what words were modeled versus what was actually spoken by the communicator. The other thing to touch on real quick, I know Delina mentioned this, was in preferences. So as I come into my preference menu, this is that require a pin. You can also lock out a board. So if you're doing a particular activity and you want to stay on a board, you can do that as well. You can change your preferred language, your preferred symbols, your skin tones. Then you can go in and depending on what type of device that you are using, you might want to change the layout. So if I'm using my phone, I'm going to want all of this to be tiny. If I am using an iPad, then I might want to increase the sizing a little bit more. Or if I'm on my laptop, I'm going to make it a lot larger. Here I can pick out what style do I want for my text? What font size do I need to make it larger? Do I want to show only the text in the message window? Or do I want the symbol to go with the text? And then all of these you're going to have for alternative access. So if I want to be doing scan setting or eye tracking or dwelling, then I can go in and change all of these settings. So once I select for eye tracking, then I'm going to start getting all the options related to that. And how do I want it to dwell? What icon do I want? All of that. So it's all integrated within the app for alternative access, which is another nice thing within the app to have that. 
me draw it back into here real fast and then show you. So these are the notes. So you can send notes back and forth between your end users and their supervisors, but also modeling ideas. So for parents that are kind of struggling with, I don't know where to go with this, I don't know what to do next. There's different modeling tips and activities already built in so that they can kind of scroll through and see different things to do with their communicators. Let me just show you real fast. And here, if we go into forms, let's do, we'll just start and play with this one. So I don't have any symbols, so we're going to need to go in and edit this. Oh, there it goes. It was just slow to load. So I can edit these exactly like before. It's super easy on your desktop to go in and edit. So if I want this one to be a puzzle, I can add that there. And then I can change the picture. So it's looking, so if you had a picture, you could take a picture, you can upload a picture, or you can drag and drop from anywhere, you can change your symbol set here. So lots of different options when it comes to modifying pages and then moving things around is super easy, especially if you're doing it on a desktop or a laptop, it makes it really nice and easy to do. And I think if there's anything else, Jelena, that I missed, you guys were talking about. I don't think so. I think that was perfect. All right. Questions, things you guys want to see. I saw earlier that one of the options was doing a, a Jiffy ASL sign. Let's see. The, the sign language, like you could put that symbol in there. Let's try Is that it. something you would be able to show? Well, I'll give it a go. Maybe. <laughs> uh, it, it, and it's not really important, but I just, I haven't seen that feature in before. And I thought that that was really neat. But I really want to give um, everyone a chance uh, to ask your questions, please. If you have them in the chat, we'll definitely um, relay them. If you want to unmute yourself and ask, questions that would be that would be wonderful as well so yes you can add yeah, it wow okay that's very cool so it's going to give you that whole phrase of i want more but yes so definitely an option i haven't done that one before but that's fun yeah i i like that um and you showed the button that that was super easy. Um, I did have a question about the bar at the top where the where the words appear. Mm -hmm. Are you able to adjust the size of that? Yep. So that is in your preferences. So if I come over here to my preferences, so right now I'm running this on my desktop. So if I go into my device layout, so right here, vocalization box, it says tiny, and that's probably because I use it most on my phone right now, but I can change it to any of these. So if I want to go into large, always scroll down, you can hit save. And now when I go back in, I'll pick this one, you can see that it's much larger. Oh, wonderful. So quick, easy changes all within your preferences setting. And what languages is CoughDrop available in? Anything that we can do through Google Translate. So within the software, you can do Google Translate. We say that also with a word of caution. Um, so we were just in New York, I said, working with New York City schools. And they have a bajillion different languages that they need. So their game plan is always to have a native speaker come in and kind of give it a proof and like once over um, before. But yes, you can translate any of them to any of the languages available. And it uses Google Translate as the engine to do that. We're looking at going with an AI solution. I'm hoping um, next year it's one of my goals. And so something that we have been talking about is 
obviously language structure changes based on the language spoken. So not every language, right, is going to be subject verb object structure. There's different ordering of words, different verb ending and things like that. So we were looking at integrating an AI feature that when we translate into a different language that it adheres to those language structure rules as well. Hopefully next year. Does anybody else have any other questions? I know I, I have a couple more, but let's see. So cough drop uses Google Translate for other languages. Correct. Okay. And again, this is an open source. So anybody would would you be able to go and find people's boards that they've already created in other languages? Yes. So if they make it public, so if I go here to public, then I can find anything that someone created. So if I'm looking for something maybe Thanksgiving related, and then I can put it into my search and it'll start looking for any of the boards. So when you create a board, you can have an option to keep it private, unlisted, or public. Public is gonna just be out there for everyone. Unlisted allows you to share between different accounts, but without, if you knew the name of it, you could probably get to it from here, but it's not just like flat out advertising that it's here. Um, so that would be another option. Oh, mine's going so slow today. But yes, yeah, so you can search and see what other people have done. And that's how I've gotten some of my other boards that I have um, were things that other people did. Let's search here too. Let's see, you try up here. There we go. So these are all different ones that are available. And then if I come over, so I know Sequoia is going to be like pod. Do you guys ever use pod or look at pod? Um, so it's more based on pragmatic functions. So if I come over here and then if I click the info, then I can see what does the board look like? Who created it? What size are we looking at? Is this something that I want? And then I can copy it to one of my communicators or I can try it and decide what I want to do with it. So it's really cool in that way that you guys can share a lot of content or you're not having to create things from scratch. You can look at what other people have already done. I will say as far as open source goes, yes, with a little asterisk, any of the Forbes boards that we were showing earlier, so these ones that are green, it's considered premium content. So that's something that is an additional fee, not for clinicians, we are able to give that out, but for um, communicators, that's a separate. Um, if they're typically those are for individuals getting a dedicated SGD, are going to be the ones looking at that premium content, and then that would be included with their SGD. So I think that touches on an important part. How do they get that? How do they so, get their consultation account for free? Yep. So we have a couple of different options. You can, there's a two month free trial account for cough drop that anybody can get. Um, for clinicians, they can always reach out to Jelena and we can get them set up with a free account. And then if you're working with a communicator, or if they're coming in through your program, they can actually have a two month free trial, including the um, premium content, if that's something that they're interested in. If they decide to submit a funding packet requesting um, an SGD with that, at that point, immediately that account becomes licensed to them for life, regardless of if funding goes through or not, that becomes their account. If they do get the device, as soon as that device ships, they would log in with their same account that they've been using in the interim and everything that they have been getting used to would populate. So that's a really nice program. We call it AAC Now. So if you see that on our website, that's what that's referring to. And the idea being that from the moment that you start doing trials, that you would have access to that communication until the time that you get your dedicated system. So I know I, I personally still have 100 questions. There's, there's never enough time for this, but we are running out of it. So Jelena, would you please put your... Um, your information in the chat so people can contact you. 
Yes, and I did share the link to the AAC now on our website. So that's where you can fill out your information to receive that um, like cough drop license and the premium content. Wonderful, wonderful. Angelina, all of that is available for Oregon because on the site that I went to, it did not, it said that Oregon wasn't one of those states that's green. It is. So um, that for sure for practitioners, it's going to differ a little bit for um, our communicators, that side where it, um, they do get the two month free trial and the other side of the program is that if they submit a funding packet, they'll get that licensed content for life. So that's the only part that um, it may be a little bit different for Oregon. All right. Well, thank you 